I'm just going to share my screen here. The first thing I'd like you to do as we kind of move in here um, is we are going to look at joining co-spaces. So to do that, go to Google and just type in uh, co-spaces into the search bar on the very top up here. And once you click enter, you should be greeted with the top hit, where the top hit is going to be co-spaces right here. So once you find your hit, uh, just click on it and it will open up this title screen, which you see here with the two children on either side and this stuff in the middle. Um, once you've got that, come up to the right corner, which is this orange button right here that says register. So click on register and just give it a second to warm up. And yeah, actually I am, <laughs> I am inside mine right now. So once you click on register, um, it will basically ask you if you are a student or if you are a teacher. So you want to click on student, it will be on this side over here and you need to enter the passcode. So the passcode we have for um, the student is S7D as in dog and 7G. So again, that passcode is S7D, 7G. And once you get that passcode in, um, it will take you to this space right here. Um, and once you're in here, you can register with Google, Microsoft, um, you can sign in with a login code. I think there's even other, there's, yeah, there's a lot of things you can sign in with. I didn't know these new ones. Um, but, and then down here, you can enter your username, um, your password, um, and once you have those both in, you can click and enter into the classroom. We'll take you to a place like this. Um, up on the top, there is a small orange button called register right here. So I just want you to click on the register button. And when you click on that, it will just take a second to load up and it will load up this screen right here and you'll have two options. Um, click on the student option right here. And then once you've clicked on the student option, I am going to put the code in the chat. So uh, it is S seven oops i'll put it capitals s7 uh, d 7 g and i'll put it in the chat there for you uh, so you can't miss it um no no just click register don't make an account just come back to where i was right here and i'll jump back again to co-spaces and just click on register right here right up on the top and we'll talk about the account part in a second and then click on student and then put that code in that i ask you to put in so uh, S7D7G. Uh, you can sign in using Google, Microsoft, Apple, Clever, um, or you can put your name in here. I'm just gonna put my name. My name's Nate. Uh, my username, I'm gonna put Nate Gamer 1977 So the username can be whatever you want. I prefer this method right here, but you're totally welcome to sign in if you have an account in any of these as well. And the password, obviously, um has i think it it has to be all those check marks have to be check marked on the side there so there's one two three four five check marks so it has to have a minimum characters it has to have numbers and letters in it so you can't just put like blueberry in there it has to have those things once your password is good you can check it and it should be good to go so this is the registration part right here once you've got it done you can just click on, click on create my account or if you sign in with google it will do it automatically for you and then once you do that, it's going to bring you into where we are. And it'll just give you a little heads up here and you can close that. So all I want you to do is just click on the, the little uh, button right here that says UBC. And inside UBC, it will have two options. One is called assignments, one is called playground. I want you to click on the, the big gray box right here that is the assignments tab. So click on that. And once you click on that, it's gonna open up your space um, and it just it gives like a little kind of light box here and it says a place to work on our skills you can just close that up um, and this is kind of where we're going to get started on actually building um, i'm just going to kind of talk about this space right here and go over it um, up on the top up here you have um, kind of these four tabs on the top this play button right here will allow you to actually play your game like play it inside of the editor this one right here is where we build our code out. So if you've ever used uh, Scratch or any other block-based program, it's similar to that, um, but it's got a lot of advanced blocks in it. Um, share is obviously when you wanna hand it out to people and show them. Uh, help, you don't need to worry about. 
Okay, over here on the top, you have a button right here called snapping. So if you click on snapping, um, you can turn snapping on or off. We'll get into that in a minute. And obviously over here, you have your home button and your undo and your redo. So your undo is also your good friend control Z or command Z if you're on a Mac. Um, I guess I'll ask, are you both on Windows machines or Mac machines or iPads or what, what kind of machines are you both using for this? I'm on a Windows computer. Cool. Are, Okay, Windows is Windows is perfect then. I'm on a Windows too, but Mac's fine as well. You're on a Mac, good, we can do either or. The iPad's a little different, you'd have to actually download it. All right, coming down to the bottom over here, these two buttons, I'm gonna leave those for now, I'm not gonna worry about them. And down on the bottom, we kind of have our library and stuff. If you click on library, this is kind of where you find all of your items. Um, there's a lot in here, I'm not gonna get into them right away, we'll talk about those in a minute. This upload button right here is where you upload your own content. So you can upload your own 3D models, um, files, videos, sound, whatever you want, or you can search the web for these things. It used to be hooked into something called, I think it was Google Poly, but not anymore. So we'll maybe talk about how to build stuff out in Tinkercad. Um, first things first, um, on, I'm on a, I have a mouse, okay? A mouse is generally a little bit easier to use in these 3D spaces. So I'm going to um, left click my mouse, and when I left click it, that allows me to rotate my camera around, well, rotate myself around my camera. My camera, a good way to describe the camera is it's you. It's like where you're seen. And you can see this like white kind of um, uh, motion out the front of it is like where you're going to look in your world. Now, the, it has two arrows here, so you can move your camera up and down. Um, it has a button up here where you can rotate your camera. You don't really want to rotate your camera yet. If you do rotate it and make a mistake, you can always click undo on the top up there. Don't leave the rotation on, though. Um, turn it off. You don't want to have that on because it can get a bit confusing. This one right here, this kind of circle button right here, is your axis. So moving on your X, um your z and your y axis um depending on how you're looking so it'll just move it in a straight line on any of those axes i usually leave that one off too now you can just grab your camera and move it around like that too there's kind of a bunch of different ways you can move your camera around and obviously this is your rotation now there's one very important um you'll notice you can't go below the grid like if you try and push down the grid stays kind of flat like that um so you can't go underneath, which is a good thing for what, working, what we're working on. Another thing to note is if you hold down your spacebar button and you click on your left mouse button, you can pull your, um, your viewer in a direction. It feels a bit weird when you first do it, but this is called panning. So this is rota rotating. And when you hold your spacebar down and pull with your left mouse, this is called panning. And panning is really important when you start to develop like a bigger area and you're starting to work larger and larger. So um, panning is something you should practice a little bit. Now, are you, do you both have mice or are you, um, are you using your trackpads? Okay, mouse lists. Okay, so Denise, I'm just trying to remember here. For a, if you have a mouse, if you, or sorry, if you're using a trackpad, if you, yeah, click down the space bar and just pull, and that will do the same thing as you clicking, left clicking on your mouse. So that should be okay. All right, cool. All right, so let's get into it. So first of all, our space right here is a bit boring. So let's start pulling out stuff and get into designing. So down on the bottom, as I mentioned before, there's a small square called library. If you click on that, um, it opens up this big library of things. Um, you can scroll to the right. There's a little arrow right here and you can scroll farther down and you can see there's tons of people. We're not gonna worry about them right now. Um, we're gonna worry about building a room. So what you wanna do is come way down to the bottom and there's a very kind of basic block that works really well. And it's called building, okay, aptly named. So click on it and inside of it, you'll have like all these different 3D shapes ranging from spheres, um, toruses, pyramids, all that stuff. The one we're worried about or the one we're going to use is just this little tiny kind of wall um, right here. So grab that, pull it out, and um, it will come into your workspace. Now you'll notice on the bottom here, this stays open. You don't want this open. It's kind of gets in the way. So click on library and that will close it again. And that allows us to kind of have more room to move around. Now I'm just going to hold down my space bar and move a little bit closer to my wall. So what I want to do here is I kind of want to create a nice 
nice basic room, just four four walls um, to kind of start our character out in because it's a good place to good place to start. You'll notice on your wall you have all these crazy arrows everywhere. These arrows will increase the depth, okay? These arrows will increase the length, and these arrows will increase the height. So don't make it too thick, you know, just want it as thick as a wall should be. I don't really know how thick that's supposed to be, but let's just drag it out and get it to kind of the size of a wall. And you can just kind of put it out in front of your camera right here, which like I said, is you, you are the camera, and just get the, the wall sitting here like that. Now, one thing you will notice, um, you might have already noticed this, is that when I move my wall around, it snaps. It's snapping to the grid. If you don't like that and you're like, oh, that's really bothering me, you can turn the snapping off right here and you can undo it. And when you move it, it will move smoothly now. That is totally up to you. Personally, I don't like snapping, but if you do, um, then keep it on. Okay, uh, next thing is we're gonna talk about colors and changing things. So on your wall right here, I guess you're on both on trackpads. So if you two finger click your trackpad, um, I call it a snake bite, just tapping with two fingers. Um, it's like a right click on your mouse. Uh, you will open up this little menu right here. And inside this menu, it has like a whole bunch of information about your wall. The part we're concerned about is the material of the wall. So you can click on the material and you can choose a new material. Um, you can change the opacity of the material so you can make it kind of like see-through like a glass so you can see through it. Um, you can also mess around with the color of it so you can do like solid colors. Um, and you can customize the colors if you click on the bottom down here you can go into you know the full-on color chart if you are super picky about your colors. And it has a hex file on the bottom and an RGB color range here. So it's a full-on. Made it purple, sweet, yeah. <laughs> I didn't make mine pretty purple. Let's see here. I kind of like that purple color. Um, yeah, so anyway, that's just like a, a coloring thing that you can totally, you can customize it. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is once you've got your wall out and you're, you're comfortable with having that in your space, let's, uh, let's get f uh, another three out. So uh, the way I like to do this is you just right click or sorry, two finger tap on your trackpad like you two are. Click on duplicate right here and that will make a copy of your wall. Once you've got the copy of your wall out, there you'll notice around the wall sits this like really wide circle. You can grab the circle and rotate your wall to, so it goes on the other side. So I'm gonna kind of attach the wall over to this side right here. Um, once I do that, I'm going to right click again. I'm gonna duplicate it again, and I'm going to attach this one over here. And then I'm gonna right click this one. I'm gonna duplicate it one more time, and I'm gonna attach it over here. So I'll just leave that for a second. Um, while I am waiting and letting you to do that, I am going to jump into your spaces. So let me show you what I mean by that in a second here. I'm just gonna grab, um, actually grab this space here and I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. So I can come into our practice here and I can come into your spaces. So Denise, I can come into yours. And I can see inside your space, you working on yours right there. It looks really good. And I'm going to jump out one more here. And Joel, I'll come into your space, see how you're doing. Good. You got your four walls attached. You just chose, chose the same color as me. Nice. <laughs> and there's an extra one here. That Actually, that might be my space. That's probably me. <laughs> yeah, this looks really good. Nice job. Denise, I'm just going to watch you work on yours. So if you're, ever, if you're ever having any trouble in your space, like if you're like, I don't know what's going on, Nate, this is really confusing, I can always come into your space and help you um, code or I can help you build. So um, Joel, are my walls too thick? Let me double check that. Uh, no, they're fine. You can make them as thick or as thin as you want. We're not super worried about it. What you don't want them to be, and let me show you, is you don't want them to be like super big like this because then that gets a bit confusing. So your, yours is the perfect size. I'm gonna show you in a second though. I'll tell you right now, your walls are a bit low and I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you why um, we're gonna make them a bit higher. But uh, let's talk about uh, that in a second here. I'm just gonna jump over to Denise, sorry. I won't, I won't uh, I'll just look at mine. Denise looking really good. Yours is up and ready there. Okay, 
Um, all right, so we've, both, we've all got our walls, at least four of them in, which is a good start. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to test this out to see what this actually plays like. So in the top right corner, you have your play button right here. So click your play button. It's right up in the top right. And you will drop into your world. Now, if you left click your, I guess, sorry, you're on trackpads, both of you. You can just click down with your left, uh, left hand and move with your right hand. And WASD, um, just like if you, I'm sure you both played Minecraft before. Um, same movement, uh, your space bar is your jump. And the reason why I said don't make your walls too low is because the character or the player could jump right out of your room almost instantly. So we definitely don't want that. So just walk around. You'll notice your room is inescapable um, at the moment, which is <laughs> not really what we wanna do. Um, but let's make, let's just grab a corner right here and you can actually open it up, make a little hole for you to walk through. And I'll just kind of walk out of my room right here and I'll show you what this looks like. And you're outside your room now. So you can alter this anywhere. So this is your play mode. If you get lost, you can always click on the arrow in the top left corner and jump back into your editor mode. They are two totally different places for two totally different applications. Okay, just a second. I'm just gonna push this over here. And I'm just going to keep an eye on, because there's, two of you it makes it really easy for me to kind of monitor and make sure you're both doing good all right sweet looks like you're kind of working in your space um now uh one thing you've probably noticed once you uh you know got your walls and you can walk outside of it um is your environment is looking pretty boring right now it's like a blank room like a gray room with nothing in it so let's spice up our um, environment a little bit. So down in the corner, um, if you remember, I think I touched on this briefly, there is a small square that says environment. It has uh, mountains and a sun on it. You click on that um, and there's a button called edit right here. If you click on edit, you have options for your environment. Now I'm gonna make one suggestion here. Do not choose the room environment because we're building a room, we don't want a room. You can choose any other environment you want, just don't choose the room one. Um, I think I am going to, um, use the, I'm going to use this basic kind of mountainscape one. Actually, I'm going to choose this snow one. So once you put it in, um, you can add effects into it. So you can have it snowing. I'll have mine lightly snowing like that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it is kind of like Minecraft. It is similar to Minecraft a bit. Yeah, you can do the leaves falling. You can add filters into it so you can like make it kind of like a camera filter like if i want to make it kind of cold that's a pretty harsh blue but i think i'm going to keep mine just kind of regular and i'm going to have the snow falling i guess mine's a bit of an arctic um environment now your character that you which is the player cannot walk into these trees you are confined to the uh grid that you are using here and we'll talk more about that soon but just so you're aware of that you can't go wandering off into the forest and wander up the mountains not yet anyway we'll talk about how we can do stuff like that in a bit okay so um give me a thumbs up if you're okay if you're all right and you're like i've got my space uh, as where yours is i don't want to move ahead and bother um moving ahead too far if everyone's feeling okay good got the thumbs up you're both okay all right so let's uh let's add some more let's learn some more skills so next thing um let's talk about doors and windows because obviously your room is pretty harsh right now so click on library down here and you'll notice in the library there is a small magnifying glass if you click on it it's your search function and you can type in window just type in window hit enter and it will locate the windows and the doors for you uh, now we're going to add um, four, uh, three. Well, you can add four windows if you want. So I'm going to start with three windows and one door. Now the beautiful thing about windows is you'll notice there's a magic wand next to them. So that means when you pull them out and you attach them, they stick to the side of your wall and they automatically. And I'm going to come over to this side, make a window, and you can adjust the size of it, um, which is really cool because before you had to actually manipulate the wall. So this makes it a lot easier. So I'm going to start with this window right here. Um, oh, that's that's the brick wall. And I'm going to bring another one over here. So I'm going to grab this window. I'm going to use like a, uh, a bit more gridded version. So I'm going to drop that down. That looks pretty good. I am going to, let's see here, grab another window. Pull this one over and bring that down a bit. 
Um, and the final one here, I'm going to add like just like a red door to the front of my design. Now the door, you can't manipulate it as nicely as the windows. You can only make it bigger and smaller with this like four corner arrow thing right here. That's the only, uh, that's the only one you can use for the window. Now there's a new one and I'm going to actually test this out. It looks like a, I don't know if it's like a garage door or something. I haven't seen it before. Um, I don't know. Oh, it must be, is it blinds? It must be blinds. They must have just put this one in because I have not seen this before. I think it is. I think it's like uh, blinds that you can maybe animate. So just one second here. I'm going to bring these blinds in and actually see. I've never used these ones before. They are, You can open them, and I'm going to show you that in a second. Um, I'm just going to mess with this. Uh, ah, they are blinds. Okay. And there is no animation for them. Okay, so never mind. I'm not going to use the blinds. Yeah, we'll talk about opening the doors in a second. Uh, I just want I'll give you guys a couple um, minutes here to kind of get your rooms feeling how you want to. One thing I would suggest um, is don't worry about getting all your walls perfect. Just kind of get them, you know, so they relatively look okay. The perfection part comes later when you're like finalizing your game. As long as you kind of have your your walls in kind of in the right place it's okay they don't have to be um they don't have to be perfect it's very easy in 3d design to kind of get lost in details um because it is such a detailed thing when you're building a game uh the, and then we got lots of other stuff to kind of focus on like our coding and stuff like that so um i'll give you another couple of minutes and just uh so you should have three windows and a door i'm going to jump into your spaces here just a second I'll bring it over so you can see. I'll bring the, um, I've got my other window in. Good, this is looking good, Joel. Grab that door and put it in somewhere in one of these. You got lots of windows, which is good. That's really good. Looking good. Oh, no, no, no. I, it's, uh, I do the same thing, um, Denise. I really get like involved in. I'm like, oh, this 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 corner's got to be perfect, and this corner's got to be like right here. Um, so I I totally understand that, and it's so easy to like try and make them like just right. Um, but you don't have to worry because it's actually when you first build a game and you're starting, you do what's called um, gray boxing. So you don't even really create the level how it's going to be in its final product because generally you're handing your game over to other people, uh, coders and artists and stuff like that. So the final product is when you really focus on your um, perfecting your product. It's kind of a it's kind of a hard thing to do and it takes a while to learn, but I totally get it on the same way. Okay, good. Uh, let's see here. I'm just going to bring this over. It looks like, Joel, you have your door. I'm just going to jump back. And Denise, I'm just going to check yours out. See how you're doing? Good. You got your door. You got a nice bay window right there. That's pretty sweet. Wish I had a window that big in my house. I'd have a great view. This looks really good. Um, okay, I'm just going to bring this over and refocus on our work. Now, Joel, your question was, um, can we open things and close them? Yes, you can. So uh, if you right click on the door um, or two finger click as you two are doing, there is an option called animation with this little person raising their arm. So if you click on that, you can click on open and that will pop the door open. Uh, this door opens inwards, which is we, I don't know, do doors usually open outwards or inwards? I can never remember. Maybe inwards. Um, so yeah, anyway, the door is, you can have it open or closed. For now, you can leave it open, I guess, because we're going to be putting a person in here. So if you click play, hold on, I'm just going to come up to my top corner. You should be able to walk out of your space. You should be able to look out of the, the windows at your beautiful landscape that you've made. But you should not be able to jump out of your walls so there we go you can kind of wander around in your space now i think my character is going to stop right here never mind they are going to go right no they are they reach an invisible wall you can see this is like the corner of my grid so i can't go any farther than that so you are restricted a little bit um on how far you can go so i'm just going to jump back into my space right here 
And yeah, just try walk walking around. And I think, Denise, in your space, you might have an extra window here. I'm just going to delete it for you so you can walk out and help you out a little bit. Perfect. OK, so just going to wait a second here. Make sure you're both all caught up and walking around. So. All right, so um, what I want to do now is once you have your space and you can kind of walk around in it, um, we are going to start to kind of talk about what are we doing here. And my first thought is this room is maybe somewhere like a story, right, where our character starts and has to move. One of the first challenges can be just, you know, getting out of the room the old door and key scenario, which most games have. It doesn't have to be a door and a key, but I think it's a good place for us to start to kind of learning about how to code this and how to use some of the, the language um, that we're going to be talking about. So what I'd like you to do is come into the library here. And in the library, you have all of these, if you click on characters next to the dog, um, you have all of these people. Now, don't choose the baby. And the reason is the baby doesn't have a lot of animations. Um, you can choose the baby later on in the game, maybe. And don't go way down here and choose like the scuba diver or the doctors or stuff like that. My suggestion while we're starting, just choose one of these very basic characters. I think they run down to maybe about here. This is your last basic character. The rest of them are specialized characters like the astronaut and all that stuff. And they don't have as many basic animations. So I'm just going to grab um, this person here. I'm not sure. I think it's a lady. And I'm going to zoom in on her. And let's bring her in. I'm going to get nice and close to her. Now, remember, when you bring them in, you want to um, use your space bar and your drag. So you can. You might like be in a weird place. So you want to zoom in and then use your space bar and drag to get in the correct position. You want to be about, about that far away from them. Um, not too close, but not way out here because we want to focus on them and talk a bit about them. Now, you can right-click them, click on materials, um, and you can change her skin, their hair, um, whatever you want. The pants, it seems like purple is my um, color that I'm looking at. I'm going to put a red shirt on her, make her eyes, I guess I could custom, I can make her eyes opaque. Oh, no, I make that, that sorry, that makes all of her opaque that's not correct uh let's see i make her eyes kind of a green like a really uh, piercing green uh and there we go i'm gonna kind of mess around with my uh character to get them the way i want them now some the characters are all look a little bit different um and we can attach like clothing to them and stuff like that to totally customize them but for now we're just going to keep them fairly simple and just alter some of the colors on them um, now, up on the top, you'll notice it's this one's called Sporty Senior Woman, um, and that's, I mean, that's fine, but I'm not going to use that name. I'm going to call her Barbara. Um, give them a name. It's just going to be a little bit easier for you to distinguish when you start to code them um, in the editor, and I just erase the basic name of them, and I always give them a unique name that I can remember when I want to start coding them. So um, once you've got that name, don't think about it too much. You can always change it later if you don't like it. The really, really important thing, and this is really uh, one of the main um, issues when students are kind of starting out and learning co-spaces, is that if you want to code something, if you want something to um, come alive, if you want to react to it, if you want to interact with it, you have to use this little square right here called code. And if you click on it, you'll see there are some options here. And this option is the most important one. It says use in code blocks. If you toggle that on, that means you can now code that character. If you don't toggle that on, you cannot touch that character inside of your code editor. For and, and do the same to your door. So if you click on your door, right click your door and click on code, turn the code on for the door. This way we can open and close the door through code um, rather than you know open and closing it inside of our editor. We'll talk about that in a second. So your person should be turned on in code and your door should be turned on in code, both of those things. OK, uh, give me a thumbs up or an OK if you're all caught up and you're feeling like you're OK um, in the 
where we are right now. I think I'm kind of looking at both of your spaces right now as we're doing this, and they both look pretty good. So we're moving fast, which is awesome. Okay, so let's start a let's start getting into our coding. So if you click play, you'll notice that they kind of stand there. Um, they have an idle animation, so she does breathe a little bit, and I think she does blink occasionally. Her eyes move around, so they do come with an idle animation, which is nice. Um, but we want to code them to, you know, kind of come alive. So in order to do that, let's come back into our editor, which is this area right here, and come up to the the little code icon, which is the square in the corner. Click that, and you have three different types of languages you can code in. Um, these are script languages, both of these, and this is block-based, which is what we're going to use for now, which is uh, a great option for, for learning. So once you click on um, the block-based language or code blocks, um, you'll notice that all these kind of weird little icons appear on the side. You'll also notice there is a settings tab at the very, very bottom. It's like a little gear icon. Click on the settings tab and make sure you click on advanced code blocks. It's this one on the bottom. Click it once. And the reason we're using that is because it gives us a whole bunch of more blocks that allow us to do all kinds of fun stuff with our characters and our scene. So make sure you're not on a uh, beginner, make sure you're on advanced. Okay, once we've got that um, handled, uh, come over to the side right here and I'm gonna zoom in a little bit to make this hopefully a little bit bigger so you can see it. Um, you can grab the corner of your coding um, editor and you can move it to the left or move it to the right, depending on how much room you want. Um, so feel free to do that. On the top, there is a small like um, button up here. Now the button has an arrow next to it. And if you click on the arrow, there's an option to rename this. Think of these as like uh, file folders and these file folders hold the, the various pieces of code that you create. So if I click on rename, I'm going to rename this. And I'm going to call this intro uh, for introduction. So go into your coding editor right here. Make sure you rename your top file, this one right here. Rename it to intro because this is going to be our introduction code that we're going to build out right here to kind of start our game out. All right. So uh, first thing we want to do is we need the player, which is you, the camera, to know that I have to start the game by clicking on the character. So what I want you to do is click on your character, sorry, right click your character and give them a little bit of speech. It's on the top. It looks like some speech bubbles. Click on it. And I want you to say, click on me. Um, that way, the character, when you enter the game, you know to start the game, you have to click on the person because they're going to kind of talk about what you need to do in the game. Um, one big uh, thing that people often do when they are making games is they assume people know what to do, but you really have to give people instructions and um, guide them through. Otherwise, they get really lost. So come back into your editor, your code editor right here, and click on this little yellow flag. It's quite small. And inside this yellow flag, you have what are called events. Now events are things that when you click on them, something happens, or when you hover on something or you push a button, something occurs. You can see there's a whole bunch of them here. We're gonna start easy um, and we'll start with what's called an input event. So this one, mine says when Barbara is clicked, I don't know what yours says, your name of your character, drag it out, click it in here. Um, and when Barbara is clicked, I want something to happen. So what we want to happen is we want Barbara to speak. So to get Barbara to speak, there is this little um, purple eyeball right here, and it's called actions. So if you click on actions, you have all of these like thinking, um, color setting, opacity settings for your character. Now, before you get her to say something, you always have to set an animation because the, she'll speak, but her mouth won't move. So um, grab the set animation of Barbara to don't animate, this one at the very, very top under the purple, pull it out and just plunk it inside of your code. Um, don't put it outside of it or it won't work. It has to be like clicked inside of it, like in Scratch, if you've ever used that before. Um, and set animation of Barbara to, um, well, you can test this out. Let's try um, dance bop. You can do whatever you want. And I'm gonna click play. And when I click on Barbara, she does like a sweet dance. Kind of a sh more of a shuffle, I guess. Um, and she just won't stop. She'll infinitely, she's very happy to dance. Yeah, she's pretty excited. 
Um, so you can try you can try an animation out in yours and see what that looks like. Um, give it a go. Just click play and see what that animation looks like. Everybody chooses something a bit different. Um, let's see what else have I got here. You that's why you choose this one, right? Um, because you have a lot of different animations you can kind of test out. Ooh, that disagree one's very. She's very upset. The facial features. She's just no, not happy with me. So if you click her again, it'll it'll like every time you click it, it will run that animation. So once you've got um yeah, once you've tried out a couple, I'll give you like three minutes or so to to try out a couple different animations. Um, and I am just going to. Um, don't mind me over here. I'm just going to jump into your scenes. I won't bring them over. I just want to see how both of you are doing. So I have Denise's one open there. Joel, I'm just going to jump into yours. I'm going to check. I can jump into your code too. Nice. Okay, you both have your code done and ready to go. That's awesome. Okay, perfect. I'm going to pop this one back up. Okay, so um, next up, let's talk about what we need to do. So we have right now my bar the Barbara character set to disagree and I want her to speak. So I am going to come all the way down to the bottom and you have some talking animations. You can do it however you want. I'm going to get her to talk excited because I don't know. I want like I want her to be a bit animated. I don't want her to be all kind of drab and boring. And then once I've got her to talk, I'm going to come back into my actions um, tab right here, and I am going to come to the third one down. You'll notice there's um, a speaking block, and it says hi. You'll also notice there's another speaking block, and it says say hi for two seconds. You want the one that says say hi for two seconds, because then we can control how long we make them talk for. So grab this one, put it in. I'll pull this over a bit. Um, and I'm going to click on it and say basically, uh, I don't know, hello and well, and welcome uh, to to this room. Ooh, I'm not spelling very well today. Uh, you will will need to find the key to escape. Keep it simple. Okay, um, you don't have to say exactly what I say, obviously. You can put something totally different in there, but something about finding something to get out of the room is a good place to start um, as you both kind of get more comfortable with the code. Okay, so you will notice when you click play and you click on your character, she talks, it's awesome, but the problem is she talks for two seconds and then she like continues talking. So what you need to do here is you need to extend the amount of talking to the amount of time you think it takes to say that sentence. So I'm going to say, I don't know, five seconds to maybe say that. And what you also need to do is you need to stop the animation at the end because she'll talk forever. She just won't stop talking because you never change the animation. So um, here's another little tip. You can right click the code block, which is this purple one. You can um, duplicate it. So there's a copy of it. And then you can put it on the bottom. And we want to change her from talking to, I don't know, what could she do? She can maybe clap. Eh, yeah, she's going to clap. She's just like really excited that you're in the room and you're going to escape, I guess. You can totally put whatever you want. But I'm going to test this animation out and see if it actually makes sense. So let's see. Hello and welcome to this room. You will need to find the key to escape. That was five seconds. That was enough time. And she just claps. Yeah, why not? I think that's all right. If I click her again, she will do exactly the same thing. She'll just like run the animation again and she'll just clap again. So, I mean, do do whatever animation you want and you know, don't you don't have to don't have to copy mine. You can do whatever you like. Um what I would suggest is we need to figure out a way that they don't like click multiple times on this person and they like say the same thing over and over again. So um, let's find a way to use this. We only want to run this once. We don't want to run it like as many times as you can click on it. So under control, I believe it's under control. Sometimes I have trouble finding the um, the piece here. So let's let's go up here. Actually, it might not be under control. Sometimes 
Uh, okay, so sorry, it wasn't under control, it was under events. So if you click on the, the flag events, if you come down, there is a one way down here and it's called other. It's at the very bottom of events. Uh, so it basically removes the click. So it means like you click them once, but you cannot click them twice. Okay, so if you grab it um, and then what you do is you put it at the top, and what that does is once you click it, you can't click it again. So it says remove when item clicked event from Barbara. So it basically takes that code away, it takes this code away. So we'll click play and I'm gonna click her once. And when I try and click her again, you'll notice that code doesn't run, which is perfect for what we want because you don't want your game all buggy and they are reloading the code over and over and over again. So I'll back up here and I'll just kind of wait for a second and, and uh if you have any questions about this part throw them in the chat now or you can unmute your mic and ask or anything like that i've been talking quite a bit so i'll give you a little bit of time to work okay <clears throat> um so I'm just going to kind of open this up a bit right here. Um, that chunk of code again is in events, and you can actually um, you can actually search up code. So on the top up here, there's a little magnifying glass, and you can like search up code. So if I type in remove, which is what the code is, that code you can see pops up um, under one of the pieces of code that has remove in it. So um, if you you can't find a piece of code, you can always use the magnifying glass on the top to search up the piece of code if you ever get lost. Okay, so what I'm gonna give you time to do right now is because I have been talking a lot, I'd like you to just kind of decorate out your room. So I'm gonna click on the code tab um, and I'm gonna kind of just pluck away here for five minutes. I wanna make my room a bit more appealing um, through the library and through the housing section right here. Um, you have some item section too, if you want to add, like you want to get, you know, add more stuff, but I'm going to add some like basic necessities in, uh, you know, that you would have in a regular house. So this is going to be like, a, I'm going to pretend this is like a living room. So I'm going to just kind of work through here and add in some living room components, I think, and you can make them bigger, or smaller, um, and just kind of get used to a little bit of 3D design while you're working here. So I think this space right here, um, I'm actually going to put a TV in the corner over here. It's not a bad plan. The TV is kind of a basic necessity. So I'm just going to put that there, spin it around, make it a bit bigger, that nice widescreen TV. And I guess a TV would probably require what is that? I don't know what that one is actually. It's just like a block. I don't like that. Um, I kind of wanted a coffee table. So I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna add this one in like that as kind of a coffee table in front of the TV. Make that a little bit bigger. Um, and what else? Oh, a couch, of course. So I'll put a couch here and kind of sitting like that. Maybe I'll make the coffee table a little bit smaller. I've made it too large. I'll make the couch a bit bigger. Now I click play. Let's see if I fall on the, the couch is, okay, the couch is right behind me. That's okay. Always click play and check where you're placing things because sometimes um, when you're building them out in 3D, you can be like, oh, that looks awesome. And then when you click play, it just looks a little strange. So make sure you're double checking everything. Um, all right, to continue on my quest here, let's add in, I'm going to add in like a chair on the side there. Um, I'm going to actually, the colors are a bit dull. I'm going purple because that is the color I've chosen for what we're doing. Um, I'm actually, and this is a bit interesting, I'm going to place a person in the corner here. They're not going to do anything. But um, I'm just going to turn them around, and maybe I'll make them talk later on. You're more you can you can do this or not. And I'm just going to change their animation to um, should be a sitting animation. Sit on chair. There it is. So you can you can um, pull people in, and you know you can have them 
just kind of sitting there hanging out in your room if you like. Whether they serve a purpose or not doesn't really matter. You can just have some fun. So I'm just going to put this guy right there. He's kind of sitting on the corner and he's just going to hang out. Um, I'm going to back out a little bit. Now, this becomes a bit annoying. As you start to build your room out and get more and more things in it, you'll notice you start grabbing things by accident and moving them. Like I just grabbed my wall by accident and I moved it, which is kind of, it can get pretty frustrating once you start to make your room actually look pretty reasonable. So what you can do is you can right click something you don't want to move and you can lock it. You can click on the lock button and that means that when you try and move it, it just moves normally. So I'm actually going to lock the walls in my room. So each one of my walls, I'm going to lock them down. And that way um, I don't have to worry about bumping them. They'll always just, whenever I click on them, they'll just move with my, my camera. So locking things down is a great way to give you a little bit more freedom inside of your space. Just a little bit of a tip there. Okay, I'm gonna pull this over. Um, one thing I do want to show you while you're building your room out is if you do have a TV in it, actually, I don't know if both of you have TVs though. I, I can see that Denise does have a TV. I'm not sure. I'll double check Joel's here. Joel does have a TV. Okay, Joel is putting one in. All right, so because you both have TVs, um, I'll show you how to do this trick here. So um, come into the little uploads tab, which is the arrow. Uh, there's library and there's this like arrow sticking straight up. Click on that. And um, you'll notice when you click on uploads and you click on images, which is this one right here, you have what's called a web search. And that obviously jumps you into the web. Um, and you can type in, um, I'm going to type in Nyan Cat, and I'm going to click on image and search up a GIF. So inside here, you can find GIFs of, um, well, whatever you want. I'm going to take this one. You hover over them, they like. This one's kind of cool. Actually, this is a class. I like this classic one. Um, oh, yeah. The people, if they're slipping through the couch, you can always grab them in. I'm in your space, Joel, and you can just pull them up and like that, and then they shouldn't be clipping. Yeah, you can just move them around. Now, Joel, you have your snapping on. So if you want to turn your snap to grid off, you can move them much more... Um, you can be very, very precise with your movement because I notice your snapping um, up here in the corner is on. So if you turn that off, if you turn this off, you can now, you should be able to move your kids. Um, yeah, you can move your kids and I'll grab them for you. Hold on one sec. I'm going to turn your snap to grid off and I'm going to grab your first kid here and I'm going to put her just sitting like that. And I don't think they're clipping anymore or they're yeah, that should be better. Sorry, I'll turn your snap grid back on for you if you want it. I wasn't sure if you wanted it or not. Okay, back to where I was. Um, I was on Nyan Cat. So you can drag the cat out or whatever GIF you want out, close up your uploads, and you'll notice you now have this like GIF inside of your space, um, little moving picture. Now you can grab the GIF and you can mess around and try and get it onto your TV like this way, which is kind of difficult. You can see I'm, I'm having to do a lot of work here. The best way to get something to attach to something, like to stick it on something, is to right click it and click on this attach button. It has like a little um, magnet on it and a circle. And when you click it, all of these circles, um, sorry, all of these um, spheres appear everywhere in your room. If you click on the sphere you want it to stick, it will stick it right to the object you want to work with. So um, attaching is an awesome way to get things um, like where you want them. It's a super handy way to um, work fast. So I'll just make that point while we're waiting. All right, so I'm just going to move out here. I've got Nyan Cat. I've got my purple couches. I've got a boy over in this corner. And yeah, for now, I think I'm just going to leave my room pretty basic like that. I can always, I can always work on it more um, when I come back. So I'll give you two another couple minutes to kind of try and get your uh, gifts or whatever you want into the right place and kind of mess around with your room. Um, I think what I could do as well is I could add some paintings on the wall. Now, if you wanted to get fancy, you could upload your own drawings. 
Um, I actually uploaded my daughter's drawing into here once into one of the games I built, which was fun. So you can build, bring your own in or a drawing that someone else does and you can put it in your space, which is pretty cool. Um, what I would like you to do is to bring in something that you can hide the key, uh, the key that we're going to create either underneath or behind something. So to do that, I think I'm going to, let's see here. I think I'm going to use the this this drawer kind of thing here. And maybe I'll hide the key behind here. And what you can also do, you can click on animation and you can close things and open things. If they have a, if they have drawers, you can like for example, this just chest of drawers right here. If I pull it out and I push it in, um, you can animate it and you can open like the drawer there, or you can close it depending on depending on how you uh, how you want it set up. And we can also code that too. So I'm just gonna leave that drawer there. And I think I'll bring in, um, oh, sorry, how can I put something on the TV? Um, to put something on the TV, I'll show you real quick. Uh, just come into uploads and click on images in the left uh, corner right here. And then under images, um, sorry, I'll go back, uh, click on web search, which is at the very bottom. And then you type in whatever you want to type. And if you want like an image, you, you can do that, or you can use a, you can grab a GIF if you want. It just depends, um, what you want. So I'm actually the second one, I'm going to grab a straight up image and I'm going to, uh, I'm going to grab a painting. Just, I'm going to type in painting and see what I get. Ooh. Okay. I'm going to grab this one with the water in it. And I'm just going to kind of open that one up, flip it, and actually, what am I doing? Why don't I just attach it to the wall? I'm going to attach to the wall. There we go. I should be using that attach function more. I'm just going to put that painting over in the corner like that, just so it kind of sits there. Okay, cool. Um, I'm just going to bring your, hold on one second here. I'm just trying to open the chat. I'm just going to bring your spaces over. This is looking awesome, Denise. Really good. I love it. Um, perfect. This looks really good. Smart. You've grouped, have you grouped your, I think you've grouped these, have you? Yeah, you've locked them and grouped them. Nice. Okay, so that looks really good. I'm going to jump back and I'm going to jump into yours, Joel. Hope you don't mind. This is good. Yeah, you got your, you got your picture on the TV. Now you'll notice your picture kind of sitting a bit outside. So you can grab it, you can kind of push it. Uh, it's still snapping, I think. That's why it's doing that. So take your snapping off and you can move it very, very precisely. Oh, sorry, you grab it all. I think we were both trying to grab the same thing at the same time there. <laughs> yeah, I'll get out. That looks good. All right, I'll bring this over here again. Okay, so. That's awesome. We've got like your spaces looking much more actually livable, like spending some time in them. Um, let's talk about let's talk about movement. So right now, your character or the person you're talking to is just standing there. They're not walking anywhere. They're literally frozen in space. So what we want your character to do is we want your character to walk around. Actually, we want your character to walk out the door and close the door behind them. So what we're going to do is we're going to use what are called pathways. So I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to get myself in a position where I'm kind of near the door right here, um, where I'm going to build a pathway outside of this door. So get yourself in a position where you're relatively close to the door. You're not too close. You're not like way far out here. Get yourself like right about here, kind of where I am. And then in library, so the library down here, you're going to come in and you're going to click on the movie. It looks like a movie camera and it says special on it so click on that and and once you've got that then you are going to use this one right here this little kind of it looks like a just looks like a line grab it and just put it on the ground in front of you like this oh sorry joel you said you're stuck i'm just i have to read the come over and read the chat sometime are you still having trouble with that or do you need me to jump in and help
you can't move. Oh, okay, weird. All right, let's let's see what's going on here. I'm going to come into your space and see why you cannot move. This might be a good learning opportunity for us. So, um, you mean your character can't move? Let's see here. If I click play, and I I know I can walk around inside of your space right here. I can move around. It looks pretty good. And if I jump out, um, yeah, no, I can, I can move around your space and move everything. Maybe it's something to do with your mouse or something like that. It seems like I, in your space, I can, in editing, um, I can move all around your space and yeah, it might be something to do with your internet connection or something. Anyway, um, did you, did you manage to bring the, um, the path in? I'll help you out with that. Let me just come into your space here. And I'm going to click on library. I'm going to click on special. And I'm going to drag the path in. I'm just going to put it by your door over here. And we're going to talk about that a bit. I'll come out now and I'll come back to where I am. OK, so um, I was talking about the path. So the path is right here. Now, the path, you want it to go from her feet. All right, so click on your path right here and grab the end of your path and put it outside of your door. Grab on this end of your path and put it at the feet of your character. So you can see my path is kind of just going in a straight line out the door. Now, if you look closely at your path, you'll notice it has arrows on it. And the arrows indicate the direction in which your character will move on the path. So um, my arrows are pointing this way. You definitely don't want your path like this um, backwards because you want them leaving, not coming in the door. Now, the next thing you want to do is once you have your path and it's going outside of the door, um, you want to right click it. You want to go on the path and you'll notice that the cool thing about paths is the code is already turned on in code blocks. So that means you can already code it. It comes automatically like that. The second thing you will notice in the paths inside of the editing menu on the path is there is a small little square here called path. Now, this path button, if you click it, you can change the size of the path. And I suggest you push it up to around 20. Um, and that way we can see the path really easily. Um, if you leave the path really small, it's going to be very, very hard to uh, maneuver it. Um, so you want to make sure that your path is really big and you want to make sure that the arrows are pointing in this direction outside of your door. You do not want the arrows coming in because that will mess up your character. They'll go backwards down the path. So make sure your arrows are going this way. OK, um, now next thing up, we want to attach our character to the path and get them walking down it, basically. So to do that, um, we'll make a we'll do a really simple one first. So what we'll do is we will come into ah, come into code up here and we are basically this character is going to say talk excitedly. Hello and welcome to the room. They're going to clap and then they're going to walk out the door. So to make them walk out the door, we're going to click on transform right here. This like, I don't think we've used this one yet. It's like this um, little blue circle up on the top and it has four arrows on it. Now under this, you have um, a whole bunch of different options. Now the one we're worried about, the one we want to use is the one called move Barbara on path, straight path. Now yours says probably something totally different than mine, but it's the third piece of code down, this one right here. So grab it pull it out and just stick it at the bottom right here. Now, um, try this out, just see what it looks like. So um, click play, click on, I'm gonna click on Barbara. She's kind of chatting away. She says, welcome to the room and she leaves. Okay, um, kind of weird, doesn't really look that realistic, but you know, it's a start, we have to start somewhere. So I'm just going to come into your spaces and see how your two, you two are doing with this. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna bring Denise over. Let's check your code out. That's awesome. So Denise, you wanna put this inside like that. So yeah, that's perfect. So put it inside, that way it'll work inside that piece of code rather than outside of it. So give that code, actually I'll click play on yours and let's see how that looks. Uh, I'm gonna look down, there she is. Yeah, and she just kind of slides out of the door like a ghost. <laughs> All right, so that's good. We're, we're, we're started. Now, if you, you would notice, actually, um, and I'll come back to mine here in a second. 
is that if you run this again, actually, I can't run it again um, because I have put a remove item click. So that's good. So what we need to do is we need to think about animating our character. So you guessed it. What we're going to do is after Barbara starts clapping, I want you to duplicate that. So she's going to clap. And what we're going to do is we're going to put um, we'll put a couple seconds in between before she claps and then starts to walk. So right after your character does whatever this is, click on here and find walk. Where's the walk? I can never remember where it is. Uh, walk. There it is. Use your regular walk. And we are going to use, I think it's under control. I just have to remember. Yes, it's under control and it's called wait. So it, it puts a pause on the program. So um, it's called wait. You can always type in wait into your search bar at the top. And I'm going to, before she starts to walk i'm gonna wait for i don't know let's try how long do i want her to clap for maybe four seconds is reasonable okay so let's click play we always want to check our code play test it so click it um see if this looks any better so let's see here she's going to clap she's going to clap for four seconds and then she's gonna yeah well not bad but i think the issue i'm having is now issue number one Barbara doesn't stop walking. Barbara is kind of like on a treadmill now to nowhere. <laughs> I'm not even sure how she does that. So we have to think about, well, first of all, we're going to um, duplicate our walk animation, put it at the end. And then we're going to, I don't know, she's just going to, She's just going to cheer at the end there. Just going to like make her cheer when she finishes it. The second thing I'm going to do is once I've got like um, her finishing her walk and going into cheering is I want Barbara before she goes on the path, I want her to turn around. I want her to like turn towards the path. You'll notice in the animation, hold on, let me come up here and click play. She doesn't actually turn. She literally like spins so fast you can't see it right about, give it a second. It should be right here. She just like, flips which is doesn't look very realistic so what we'll do is we will come into our transform and under transform we have a rotation it's the fourth one down um and it says turn something clockwise by 180 degrees in one second so it's the fourth piece of code down so you can grab that and let's see so after she right after that four seconds i'm going to get barbara to hmm Maybe I'll get her to walk while she's turning around. So I'm going to double up my walk. So after four seconds, she's going to walk. She's going to turn clockwise by 180 degrees in one second, uh, maybe two seconds. And then she's going to walk again. So again, that is after your wait for four seconds, I'm going to get her to walk, turn clockwise, and then walk again. I don't know if I need this extra walk right here, but I'm going to I'm going to test this code out. So let's see if this looks any better. She might turn really fast. So let's see here. So she's going to say her thing. She's going to clap. And then she should turn. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah, I think that looks a lot more realistic, honestly. She does kind of glide walk. So um, you can alter like how quickly she moves down the path with this thing right here. So. I might make her move down the path in six seconds rather than five, and that should slow her down a little bit. Totally up to you. You have to kind of um, look at the animation and see how that's going to work. Um, OK, so this is pretty cool. We've actually got like a bit of an intro scene with our space. So I'm just going to kind of move Barbara a little bit and put her right on top of the edge of that. And I think what I'm also going to do is Barbara's path is really straight. It's, she's literally like shooting outside the door, like in a straight line. If you don't want it to be straight, you can curve your paths or you can make corners in them. Um, and the way you do that is you come into the path, you right click it. And under the path um, part right here, you can come down and there's this thing called curve right here. So if you click on curve, it doesn't do anything when you first do it. It, it like does absolutely nothing. But if you right click it again 
and come down to edit path, which is this third one down here. You can click on that and you can you can add points onto your path. So you can see I'm just like clicking on my path and I'm adding these like little blue dots onto it. You have to right click it and click on edit path and add these little points. Now, wherever you put a point, if you click off and grab the point, you can bend your path. So you can grab your path and I can make her like, I'm gonna come out the door actually here and make this a bit easier. You can have Barbara like um, bending and walking around a corner like that rather than, you know, just having this straight boring path. I can have her maybe kind of come outside of the door here, maybe a bit on a corner. Um, I can do that one more time for you if anybody needs any help. Now be very careful um, and I'll show you. Uh, Denise, I'll just show you what's going on there. When you click on it, if you grab this one, you'll bend and pull your, um, it's like pulling a carpet up in the air. So you want to keep her very flat on the ground. Otherwise she'll walk in the air, which I'm, you know what, whatever, maybe that's what you want. Let me, let me see what that looks like. I think she'll like kind of float the, the air one when you have them like in the air is great for like um, flying animals. So you could have put a path on like a parrot or a bird and you can, let's see what she does. She walk out the door, she go up. Like she's climbing a mountain and then <laughs> climbing down. <laughs> oh, that looks awesome. I don't really, I don't think I really want that. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to click and I'm going to lower the path back down to the ground like that. But you are more than welcome to curve it if you want them to, uh, yeah, go up in the air. It's all good. Yeah, it's pretty fun, Denise. It's kind of, you can make some really strange stuff. And we haven't uh, even gotten into sound effects and stuff like that yet. So. This is definitely, definitely a new world. Um, let's see here. Well, we got that path going. Um, what we want to happen here is, and I'm going to get into this with you because you're both quite, seem like you're moving quite quickly. We don't want the door open to start with because we don't, if the door is open, watch what happens. This is like, so the door is open. She's like, welcome to my escape room. I just like, okay, whatever. I'm just going to walk out the door. I'm just going to leave. I don't even have to listen to her, right? We do not want the character walking out the door. That is not good. So click on your door. Um, I think I might, hopefully I didn't lock it. Let's see. I'm going to right click the door and I'm going to actually close my door. Okay. So my door is going to start closed so I can't leave. Now what we're going to have happen is once the door is closed, we're going to open it. So I'm just going to, I'll just wait a second and let you two kind of catch up and um, work on your paths a bit. But I want to talk a bit about keeping them in the room because right now um, they can leave. <laughs> okay. So Joel, are you okay with this next part? I just want to make sure you and Denise are okay. I just want to kind of show you how to open and close the door. So the person cannot leave. I just want to make sure that I'm going to actually jump into your space, Joel, here real quick. Let's see how you're doing. Ah, that looks good. Okay, you're ready to do this. All right, so let's do it. So once you've got your door closed, um, what we're going to do is we are going to have it so right on my code, where is she? She turns clockwise. And then I'm going to have the door open. Okay. So um, what you're going to do to do that is you are going to click on actions. You're going to grab the set animation. Sorry, I'll make this bigger. This is a bit small for you. Um, I'm going to click on the set animation of whatever it is. And I'm going to put it right underneath the part where she turns clockwise. Sorry, that's a lot of instructions there. But what I want you to do is I want you to grab that um, animation tab and I want you to put it right underneath there. Now, I want you to flick it to open. And then once she walks through it, we're going to close it. Now, you have a problem. And let me show you your problem. When you duplicate this code, you bring it out and you put it just below here and you close the door. You have a point in time here where they can walk through the door with your character because the door is open. She walks through it in six seconds and they can run through the door. Let me show you what I mean. So I click on her. She's like, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to clap and now I'm going to leave. 
And while she's leaving, I'm going to get sneaky. And I'm just going to slide out with her. See that? She leaves and she goes all the way over here. And the door closes. And I'm like, sweet. I didn't even have to escape the room. That was super easy. So we need to figure out a way that they cannot get through that door. And one way to do that is what with using what are called parallel blocks. And what parallel blocks are is they allow you to run two pieces of code at the same time. Currently, you are only running one piece of code. You can see your code is sequential. Everything happens 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. But with parallel blocks, we can kind of cheat. So click on Control. It's the one with the two arrows right here. Come down. And you have under other right here, one called run parallel. OK, so run parallel, um, pull it out. And for now, just plunk it on the very bottom. Just stick it way down on the bottom of your code, way down here. So we're just going to like stick it down there. And then we're going to kind of talk about how we can use it. OK, so once you've got it, um, let's take our entire, let's see here where she turns 180 right here. So pull your whole, you can grab, um, you can click on one piece of code, hold down shift and grab like chunks of code. You can see I've got 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14 all highlighted. And I can pull them out and put them all inside one run parallel block right here. I'll do that one more time if that was a little bit confusing. Oh, actually I can't back it up now. <laughs> So let me show you again. Um, just click on the top one, hold down shift, go to the bottom one, and then pull them all out at the same time. So you should have after, it should be, it should say um, how many seconds, and then the walk, and then you've got like all of this code in here. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to take our uh, front door animation, and we're going to leave it there. That's OK. But we're going to take our front door close animation, and I want you to put it inside of the run parallel block right there. OK, so actually, this door is going to open and close at the same time. It's going to open and close. We want to put a delay on it. So you've got your wait for four seconds, um, which if you type in the search bar, you can type in wait. And I am going to wait for, I don't know, I'm going to try and wait for two seconds. So it's going to, the door is going to open right here. And this piece of code runs at the same time. It's going to wait for two seconds and it's going to slam the door. So let's see how this works. I'm going to try this out. So she's going to kind of talk. She's going to turn around. She's going to go out the door. Oh, my door didn't even open. That was not good. I got something in my code, a bit messed up here, obviously. OK, so let's see. Ah, it took her two seconds to turn around. That's why. <laughs> so um, I am going to maybe grab the open. And I'm just going to put it. Uh, yeah, maybe I'll put it right here like that. So I'll keep that open. This piece of code that I'm building out right here, I'm going to kind of, um, because we're Let's try this again. So it's going to, the door is going to open. It's going to wait for two seconds and then it should close. Now, I don't know if she's going to be able to get through the door or not, but let's find out. Let's see here. Okay, so she goes. Door opens, two seconds. Oh, it closed too soon. So I got to get her, I got to get her out the door. Um, I'm going to wait for four seconds, I think. That might be um, that might be better. So let's grab this one again. Um, I'm going to turn her clockwise. It's going to wait for four seconds here, maybe six seconds actually. Let's see if that works. That's part of coding. You have to like test out animations and stuff like that to get them to work. It's uh, not always super straightforward. So here she goes. She's going to turn around. Door's going to open. One, two, three, four, five, six. Door is going to close. Probably, I probably can do it in five seconds, not six seconds. And this still doesn't present you prevent you from going out the door. But I just want to show you some of um, different ways to do things. So I'm going to wait five seconds and then have the door close right here. So that might be better. 
Um, I will come over and help you out. So I'm just going to jump back here. And I'll jump into yours. And jump into your code. Yeah. OK, so we just need to put the parallel code block in, right? So let's grab Control. Let's come down to the Run Parallel. I'm just going to put it at the very, oh, you've already got it. Sorry, you, you pulled it out. Um, and then I am going to put all of, I'm just going to grab your code if it's OK. I'll just grab it from you, OK? So let's keep the wave up here. Let's keep the hello welcome up here. Um, and then I'm going to grab all of, let's keep this wait for three seconds. Um, and then I'm going to grab all of this code from here to here. I'm just going to put it inside of this block. Yeah, and that, that should be pretty good. He just turns and then he walks and then he walks out the path. Now we need to get the animation for the door opening and closing in here. So I'm going to click on actions. I'm going to come up to the very top. Oops, not the very top, but right here. And I am going to get him to turn 180. And then I am going to open the door right here. And then I'm going to kind of close the door. So let's go wait for one second, which is right here. And then I'm just going to duplicate this block for you. And then I'm going to close the door. So there we go. So he should, oh, let's see how this runs. So he turns around. the. He, it waits for two seconds. It turns around. The door opens. And this one, we're going to put it at maybe five seconds. I'm just going to test your code out, actually. I don't, I don't know exactly how this is going to look. So uh, where is he? There he is. Okay. And then he's going to kind of wave. And let's see. Oh, well, he turns right around. There he goes. And the door should close after him. Yeah, that actually looks pretty good. That doesn't look too bad. We can still leave the room, but that's OK. We're just kind of focusing on animation right now. Hopefully, that's a little bit better for you. And Denise, I'm going to come into yours real quick here. And I'm just going to check your code out. This looks pretty good. I, I think what you do want here, though, because the door is going to open and close at the same time. So we're just going to put a bit of a delay uh, right here on your door opening and closing. So the door opens maybe after she turns right there. And then it waits for, I don't know, let's say five seconds. And then the door closes after her. So let us let me just open this up and test your code out right here. Right here. So let's click on her and back up a little bit. And let's see here. So she should turn around. Door opens. Oh, <laughs> she kind of walks through a, a brick wall there. That's interesting. I wonder why that is. Let's figure that out. Um, oh, the door, I think, has maybe come off the wall. So we'll just um, attach it to the wall. And there we go. We don't have that problem anymore. So that should be good. Perfect. OK. Let me jump out of yours, and I will come back this way. And I am back in mine. So yeah, and we'll, you know, that's fine. We're just we'll talk about more um, ways to kind of stop them leaving the room, but we're not really concerned about right that that right now. We're just kind of talking about parallel blocks. So.